welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And that's it. No guests tonight. Uh, we got stuff to talk about, and uh, we're trying to slam some episodes together uh, before uh, Ross's wife has a baby, and they before things get to, happen. Yeah, they get to deal with life-changing uh, events. So uh, tonight, we it's just the two of us, as always. We are socially distanced. I'm Kansas City. Ross is in Connecticut. And yeah, this is the closest we've been in over a week because i two weeks ish went like to way different time zones so um yep we should start with that the news is unimportant well i i do want to talk about the d130 because i got okay. like friends sending me pictures and stuff like that mm-hmm. and i'm like i'm sorry it's still not big enough like <laughs> it's not big enough for you but it, it looks right it's kind of hysterically proportional so it is hysterically proportional and i saw a number of parodies of like the D-150, the D-250. <laughs> they like only they... stretch the back. So <laughs> for the listeners, the long and the short of it is we, we have a, a two-door Defender 90. There's a four-door Defender 110. And now we have a lengthened Defender to make the D-130, which, correct me if I'm wrong, in all fairness, I did not, did not read every word of the press release, but it seems that they only added length after the rear wheels. There's no additional wheelbase it is purely third row cargo area which I believe, proportionally believe you're correct poses some some visual issues in lighter color also so, like land rover not doing a great job on the press photo game because my google search yielded nothing do you have their site i do i just don't <laughs> want to navigate directly to oh, it yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of lazy uh, right now. Here so we go. the long and the short of it is that it effectively, from my understanding, doubles the amount of cargo space behind the third row, give or take, and extends how much legroom there is uh, for would-be third row passengers on the 110. And, you know, all the same off-road chops, minus obviously worsened departure angle. Um, but it's exactly what you think it is. It still has, you know, 35 inches or so of water fording depth ability. And the four by four system still controlled in the infotainment. Yes, it is. Well, there's a, there's technically a few buttons through which you can tr- control it. You can change the terrain mode by pushing two different buttons and then you turn the dial for the HVAC controls which changes it on the screen. So yes, if the screen takes a shit, you're shit out of luck, but I don't know. It's the, uh, it's the defender we all knew was coming for the last, how long, two years. I mean, because America, you know? Yeah. So just not, I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. Do you, are you sharing, are you screen sharing it? I'm trying to find one, but like, of course they're like forcing me to download the images. I was like, just let me open you in a new tab. <laughs> I think Jeff really... posted some pictures on, on a website called Hooniverse. Mm. Have you heard of it? Straight to there. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a behemoth or at least it looks to be so. And I just want to get the length here. Let's it's long. see. It looks, it certainly looks long. So your suburban is what, like 225 or so? Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head. Okay. Let's see. This is making for absolutely fantastic audio of us hunting through. Shocking that it's it, it's been two weeks. Like it's been a hot minute. So yeah, we're out um, of practice. All right. Hey, whoa, Jeff. This image is robust so i'm seeing 203.5 inches long for the d130 for the d130 all right i'm finally sharing an image of it good lord see that that paint scheme does not do it favors that's a little like whatever's man. going on here yeah there's about a foot of unbroken sheet metal after the rear tire and the back window the between c and d pillar the the floating blacked out d pillar makes it look like oh god it's it's just 
troubling. Um, it's not ideal, but it is what it is. They'll sell also, some. <laughs> the 130 in that picture was on Goodyear Wrangler Dura tracks, which, as far as I know, are not available from the factory. Mm. So, uh, yeah, we need to talk about tires in a little bit. I, I need some help. Um, okay. I tend to know things about them. Yeah, I might need to know a name of a guy kind of thing. Um, or what a vehicle. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Oh. Or we'll talk about it off the air, actually. We're not going yeah, to okay. do that one. Um, anyway, so the D130 is out. People will buy some of them. Kind of like the regular Defenders. I saw a bunch of uh, Defenders in like the last two weeks. Some of them like fully kitted out. Some of them just like ready to just be Defender-ish. Um, it's still not my favorite, but I also like don't hate it like it's just it's not my cup of tea and i get that i don't know if i believe land rover site because it is telling me that it is 198 inches long with a spare tire i'm sorry that's a really long truck 198 inches my truck's 190 and the lexus is pretty small let's be real yeah so like only oh no it's it's something's wrong because it's showing the same thing as for the 110 that's what the 110 that's the length of the 110 yeah, that makes sense. Um, this website is. Uh... Mm. Well, sweet. You want to let's talk about your new acquisition. A new acquisition. We haven't yes. talked about it on the show yet. <laughs> no, we haven't. We're going straight to the, uh, you know, most off ready stuff here. Um, bought a 1999 Miata. Nice. So. Not really off roady at all. Yeah, that is always the answer. Cheap sports cars are best sports cars. Yep. So it has 107,000 miles on it. Holy shit, that seems um, low. It's pretty low. It's a 99, though, so that's pretty, that's lower than both of my vehicles. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty low. Um, my 2008 I, I'm and my the, 2017. <laughs> I think I'm the seventh owner. Oh lord. Yeah, it's been around the block. Um, it's but still you know. Miata. It's a 10 footer. It's definitely a 10 footer, you know, okay. 10 feet away. looks great. Photographs. Great. Get up close and you're like, Hmm, somebody who cares more <laughs> about paint quality and, uh, you know, like waxing and washing the car would have a field day with it. But yeah, no, it's, it's in pretty good shape. Um, it has H and R springs and Bilstein B8 shocks and fat cat motorsports bump stops, progressive bump stops. So okay. corners totally flat. Um, ride surprisingly well. I was actually kind of shocked. And let's see what else it has. It has a racing beat titanium header and a fly me out of full exhaust. Okay. Um, Catless. So it probably makes all of 95 horsepower at the wheels now. <laughs> if I'm lucky. <laughs> I think. Yeah, but the, it also weighs what? Like the factory weight on them was like 2250. Yeah. You're like, you're fine. So it's, I mean, it, it, it's definitely slow. You know, we we were joking about drag racing it today against uh, against the Players Razor, and it'll probably lose, and it'll definitely lose against like the Pro R, you know, which is uh, two hundred and twenty five horsepower. Exactly. But, yeah. What else is that? It has. Um, they also cost like three times as much of what you probably spent on this. Three? Oh my god! Um, <laughs> probably I'll, way I'll, more than that. <laughs> this one cost less than a tenth of a new Miata. Okay. So extrapolate from there less than a tenth of a new club okay and less than and it's about i think i calculated yesterday it's 8.2 percent of what the rf club that is coming tomorrow to test for a week costs nice <laughs> yeah so you know all things considered pretty good um it's got uh 15 by 7 inch wheels that weigh 11 pounds each which is very good for the autocross and it's got dunlop dereza d2s on it which are, they're okay. They, in my experience, grip really well for the first like five to 8,000 miles and then, you know, kind of lose it. Um, and especially as they age. So might explore some tires after some autocross this year and, you know, try to find something for the spring. But yeah, for a weekend toy and what I paid, no, it's, it's, it should be fun. Right. Yeah. Well, sweet. Um, so talk about. Stuff. Well, you want to talk about Veloster N real fast, just because okay. yeah, those we'll are good. Do, we'll do Veloster N real quick. Um, so they they gave me the DCT car for a week, which shifts so fast. It is such a great gearbox. Um, I think the only 
automatic transmission I've experienced that really could keep up with it in terms of responsiveness and like the kick that you get from it is the C8 gearbox. Really? Um, You know, obviously I haven't driven like Ferraris or PDK or um, McLarens or Lamborghinis or anything, but it, the third, fourth, fifth upshift gives you that like, you know, back and forth punch like in the back of you. And it, it is truly, truly a fast car. Uh, from third through fifth. And is it I wish is it the blue? Oh, no, I wish they had given it to me in that blue. What, what is that? Is that perform? Not performance blue, but um, better than all the other colors that they make blue. They gave it to me black. Uh, okay. But yeah, you know, it, so it, it was pretty interesting um, after the Civic Si because the Si is, I think the DCT Veloster M is like thirty five or so, mm-hmm. and the Si is like twenty eight, and they're totally different driving experiences. Um, the Veloster is just so much faster and i know that's like obvious because it's 70 horsepower up on the civic but the civic is you know a couple hundred pounds less um it would have been interesting to do you know stick versus stick comparison but yeah that very well could be the exact car um <laughs> and it kind of looks like it might be somewhere around here to be totally honest but yeah man it, it the veloster is fast and you know it, it definitely has some of those like traditional hot hatch characteristics yeah. you know like the interior quality is like there's a ton of features but the plastics are shit, not great you know um and like it's usable but not that usable and you know it it, it just it drives like a big engine in a small and expensive car which is the perfect way for a hot hatch to be um i i, I took it on a few like good back rows of rips and it, the visibility is great. You know, that's a big thing for me and a big, because I'm, you know, I'm five, nine or I used to be five ten, but now I'm five. <laughs> and around here, you know, we don't have the canyons that California has or, or, you know, the desert that the West has or anything like that. So visibility on a back road, because most of the roads where you maintain some kind of speed are, are at least semi-residential visibility is huge. Um, you know, and, and just being able to see, not just in front of you, like where the hood ends, but also just that bigger, broader spectrum. You know, you sit like slumped down in a, in a sports car like the C8. And yes, you have good visibility, but you also lose some because the dash comes up higher right. and you're not sitting as upright. So inherently, you know, it takes you longer to catch things. Uh, because of the Veloster's visibility and the amount of like just punch that it has from you know 2000 rpm to redline i honestly with a good like i didn't love the tires that were on it they didn't really better than the tires that are on the golf r right now that's outside which uh <laughs> say winter you know is um, it really yeah i didn't tell you that no oh my God. the golf r is winter tires. <laughs> the golf r is a winter they dropped the golf r off on a day that was 93 degrees and it's on winters and and that was the coolest day of the week so, yeah, that's I think, I think I think I might be the last person with that car before it gets taken out because it's got like eight thousand miles on it. Um, but yeah, the Veloster N, I I truly don't know between the combination of the DCT, the visibility, and just the where the power band is. If there are any other any cars anywhere near that price that I could get down the back road as quickly, and okay. at least around here, you know. Yeah. Um, and I, I, in all fairness, think that also represents like my driving ability you know like sure i could go probably as quick in an in an nd2 miata or something but there's just so much confidence you get from a front wheel drive car with turbo power right. and that like you're sitting over the front axle kind of mojo and oh yeah you know the thing rips like it's really truly a fast car uh, and especially for 35 grand you know it it, it's deceptively slow from zero to 60 because it, it feels like it has progressive boost where first and second are kind of throttled back yeah. and then you get into third and it's just, it's just, gone. just, let it's just it go freaking freight trains. <laughs> so it's uh yeah, I, you know, if it was four wheel doors and all wheel drive, they would sell a metric fuck ton of them. Yeah. But you know, then it would be 50 grand. Right. So four, four wheel doors wouldn't hurt, but four. I, so 
on my trip, the rental car to get that some one of my coworkers brought to the expo was a Velocitor. And that was what we were using to shuttle some of us into the show. Not a great people mover. Like no. not, especially when one of the non-driver occupants is a little short of six four. Yeah. And the other guy is probably pushing 250, 275. Oh, like not great for that. See, not it would yeah. Totally fine for like a family of three and you know it's a small child right like a, a five-year-old where they're sitting in like an upright car seat but exactly you know but not something that robs like leg room but you can't um, add the second kid to the back because you can't open the no, other rear door <laughs> no no it's so silly if you've twi- if you end up with twins in that car yeah you like, do you could make it work because you can pull the driver's seat forward on the driver's side but you know obviously the driver's on the driver's side but yeah it's a uh, good car twins always gonna be like why do you leave me (laughs) pretty much pretty much but yeah it's a good car it's uh it's like 85 percent of the way there to be in a great car that's awesome yeah let's save a golf art till next time you can you can sounds good tell me how much it sucks let's let's let it leave (laughs) i won't no it's it's not it doesn't doesn't tease them just tease them just tease them uh fucking so we're far on snow tires let's leave it yeah exactly so where do you want to start? Um, I want you so, to tell me and everybody else about the trip because it, it seems like it was really like a special trip of seeing special places. It it was something for sure. So uh, I'll start at Expo West first just because that's like chronologically so, what we did. Just set the stage here. So this trip, so obviously you work for the company whose name is embroidered on the side of the van that we're looking at. Yep. Um, the trip was kind of a marketing trip that you jumped into. Well, so the first part of it was to attend Overland Expo West in my current role. Mm-hmm. And that, everything I did was totally uh, in line with what I would do for other shows. Like if, and other shows are potentially possible. I just haven't discussed that yet um, with the team. So we went to Expo West five days. And then at the end of that, um, myself and the other sales guy we drove the vans out of the show and then co-workers flew in monday morning and we picked them up and that's where the rest of the trip went so but first expo west was great i had a had a blast meeting people in person that we hadn't seen so who of our friends did you see richard and ashley were super easy to find (laughs) um matt schwartz was super easy to find i never Never was able to track down Scott Brady. That dude is freaking oh, loose. He went yeah. by one time and I was talking to somebody and I was like, that's Scott Brady. I'm never going to be able to <laughs> talk to him. Like it was like right out of hands of reach. Um, and then uh, I met uh, someone we, we've been trying to schedule for a while, Graham. Uh, oh, you did? At Overland Journal. I introduced myself to Graham. It's like, hey, Graham, I'm Chris. We've been messaging a lot. Yeah. He goes, I know you. And he's like, my schedule's so crazy. I was like, it's fine. We'll make it work eventually. I'll see you, dude. I'll see you. Um, I saw Brian Dorr. Mm-hmm. Um, who else did I see? I saw Rochelle Croft. I ran into her oh, nice. and, and her three boys. Clay was busy. Oh, yeah. uh, I saw Kurt um, from Cruiser Kurt Outfitters. From Cruiser? Cool. Yep. Oh, man. He's um, not, that's a hell of a. Curly saw plans. saw Andy. Oh yeah, <laughs> at Warren Tent. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, awesome. Andy, if you still got those koozies that somebody stole it off my van, I need one back. Um, <laughs> Warren branded koozies. Well, not only are they branded koozies, they had the magnets on them too. So, like, of course, uh... I took one from their tent and put it on the front bumper of our our metal front bumper with the worn winch you guys behind it. Winches, yeah. yeah, I was like, we use those, and like, it was like, now I looked down later in the day, I was like, son of a bitch, somebody stole my koozie. Um, saw andy who else did i see i it got to the point where i was starting to not remember i did see mercedes but like it was in passing i didn't get to introduce myself um brian i feel like those are the highlights and i'm probably neglecting someone right now and i'll feel bad about it later um that's pretty good that's that's um and i'm i I made connections with some people that like i've been trying to reach out to digitally too and so like mm -hmm. i got to meet them in person so like you'll probably see some new guests in the future and uh yeah just know that i probably met him at expo so but uh really the show was great like the stuff that was there was pretty awesome excuse me my dinner's deciding to come back up 
Um, I did you haven't had that, somebody puke on the show yet. That's yeah. Cool. I did take that video of like on top of one of the vans and I just kind of panned around like the show was really big. Like even on Sunday, uh, I was talking to people or seeing people and I was like, where are you located? And they would say a place and it would be someplace I'd never been to or heard of yet. And I saw it's previous. So you were in the middle of this like parking lot kind of thing. Yes. I saw a lot of pictures of people who were camped out in the, tr- like in the trees. In the trees. You know, yes, like absolutely. There deep were ton, in the woods. tons of camping all around. Um, it was all filled up. The issue was it was crazy windy the whole time we were there. And this really? is someone from the Midwest pointing out how windy <laughs> it was. Like I'm used to 20, 30 mile an hour sustained winds. Um, Friday, when the show started, there were 50 mile an hour gusts. That's a lot of wind. Well, and so like the vans were open for a lot of it. Like mm-hmm. um, to then have the, yeah, yeah vans were open the whole time. So we just got, we got dusty. Um, but it was great. As you do. Yeah. Talked to lots of people, saw lots of cool stuff. Um, I don't cool. know. That's just, it was, it was good. So, so you recommend expo for, uh, for expo oh, West, at least definitely. For yeah. One thing I really liked about it and I could definitely see it on like, um, people who I talk, so like people who are specifically interested in the vans, mm-hmm. um, they always want no price range. And so we'd always kind of get, we give them a ballpark. Like we don't, you, I don't, you're literally not allowed to give them a specific price in Arizona. Like then it's like us being a dealer in that state kind of thing. And we would have violated some rules. So like I always gave them the ballpark. Um, and then a lot of times some people would be like, Oh, like I'm sure it's expensive. You can't surprise me. I was like, I bet I do. Cause pretty, pretty early on at the show, I realized like we're very economical when you cross shop at Expo West. Mm-hmm. If you just find it straight off the internet and you look at the individual price of it, it's expensive. Oh, like it's course. not a small number. But then when you're cross shopping things that start in the twos, threes, fours. Yeah, anything that starts extreme. within E. Right, Earth Cruiser, Earth Roamer, uh, Global Expedition Vehicles were there. Oh my God, those things are so big. <laughs> <laughs> stories taller than i am like just oh i still want one um but yeah i also figured out uh real fast how to tell if someone owns a sprinter or not they'll tell you they own a sprinter no they tell you the wheelbase oh i have 144 i have a 170 all the transits are the same wheelbase like they don't move the wheels around on right. the transit so um i'm pretty sure i got those numbers right but that's how Real quickly, I learned. And then the hilarious part to me, so like the wraps you saw there, the wraps, for whatever reason, um, they're both wrapped kind of kind of the same way. People couldn't tell what kind of van they were based on the wraps. That's pretty funny. From the side, they were like, wait, oh, oh this is a transit? Like they couldn't, yeah. they couldn't process that like, it wasn't a sprinter. Like, oh, it's a high top, but it's a high top. What? They're both transits, yeah. No, I'm, sorry, I'm doing yeah, yeah. You know, you're doing your Gary's Reynolds impression. I get it. Uh, from that's a dollop reference. If anyone didn't get it, you're I need playing. to pick back up on the dollop. I, I, no, you don't. It's just gonna make you sad no. again. Oh, so no. anyway, just look the news. You'll be sad anyways. I haven't, and that's the thing is like I've been, I've been out. Like I don't tell me. Um, <laughs> I, I know the one major thing. I got that. Somebody ruined my day with that. Um. So after Expo was over, um, so the nice thing about the working the Expo is we worked it with um, a couple who is a van owner. They live in their van um, full time. They just spent three months down in Baja with their dog, Barry. Um, Barry, <laughs> Barry was so great. He's a big chocolate lab. Hilariously, the three months in Baja made him go blonder. And so <laughs> like, he's still like a chocolate lab and you can tell he's a chocolate lab, but when he's next to like another chocolate lab who has less spent chocolate. three months in Baja, yeah. He looks like skim milk. I don't like how <laughs> skim my chocolate milk. gets red in the summer. <laughs> exactly. Or mine just goes gray with age. Have you um, watched Barry, <laughs> speaking of? Because if not, you have to. Do what? Have you, have you watched Barry? You I have watched Barry, Barry, yes. Okay, exactly. Which is, yeah. I was having a lot of fun making references to the <laughs> show. You killed my uh, bodies. I don't think I took a picture of Barry, which I'm kind of upset about now. Um, but there are a bunch of bulldog puppies, which that was pretty great. So anyway, Ooh, that, that is really the show's over um for whatever reason we didn't have the airbnb for another night so because that my coworker who i was with had never been to the grand canyon it's only like an hour and a half from flagstaff so literally as soon as the show was over we basically fueled put because you had 
for whatever reason, even though X was an outdoor show, they were like, make sure you only have a quarter tank of gas. So we made sure of that. For indoor shows, it's a fire hazard thing. Like I get that, but like we were outside. Like I don't know, it's that big a deal. But yeah, had to refuel them. I have spent a crap ton of company money on gas lately. It's gas um, aren't help in that case. Yep. So we went to Grand Canyon, saw that it was cool. Um, There was a picture I took because uh, it's just tourists, and so at the Grand Canyon. This is a juvenile California condor. This is the the mature condor. These guys are fucking like, huge. All these people right there. When this thing this thing just kind of like stretched its wings, and I was like, "Good lord!" Like waiting for the, people to run away. Yeah, it was the juvenile one. And he um, just kind of barely moved his wings. Also, speaking of news, just a casual reminder: don't approach wild animals, people. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's kind of dumb. It's though. their territory and their domain. Like, right? take your picture from 100 feet away, and that's it. Go home. <laughs> People are dumb. Yes. So yeah, we saw some elk. The Grand Canyon was pretty smoky. Uh, hadn't rained in a while, <laughs> so the, the colors were a little muted. Um, but it was nice to see it again. Like, it was still impressive. <laughs> like it's, it's Grand Canyon. Yeah, like, if you haven't the, been, I highly suggest it's, it. It's still... It's still it's my so place. Is like, no matter how many times you see pictures or videos, until you're standing there in front of it, looking at the depth as it continues just to keep going down 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 you're like what is happening like the canyon just seems to go forever and it's just Mm -hmm. amazing so uh yeah it wasn't even like on our list of things to do it was just more like hey we got a free evening let's check that off the fun part was uh i started using i overlander that night like nice where are we where are we gonna camp what are we gonna do um, so we, we actually went back out of the national park. We only took one of the vans in the national park because why pay $35 twice for something I've already seen. So, um, we drove, so there, there are two models of vans here. This one, the shorter, this is a long chassis transit and it's, it's the live model. So this one has a queen bed in the back of it. So for the next hour or whatever, if I keep saying live, that's it's, I call it the live model, but it's because of what's inside of it. The big, the big one, uh, her name is Deborah. <laughs> when I picked up my coworker, eventually we named the van because she's got white hips. Like, and Deborah just felt like a, a, a correct name for a van with some white hips. Uh, I apologize to all Debras right now. Yep, I'm gonna let you run with that one. Yep. So they they tried to tell us like this one had a name by the end of the trip, and we're like, whatever, that doesn't count. Like, you can't just name it the last day. Like, you have to have, like worked into it. So. But I overlander was super easy to use as long as I had a signal. And even then, like when there were times I would upload a campsite and I didn't have a signal. Mm-hmm. Um, but like later it would like, like once I was Populate. back in an area, like it would still let me fill out the campsite, things like that. So first night was Grand Canyon second. So the next morning we drove back to Flagstaff, pick up uh, my coworkers and then drove what was basically fire roads um out to this place which is called the end of the world that is movie-esque it's reminiscent of like you know stuff you see on other worlds right so cool. it, it it's it's one of the coolest places i've ever been um there's a place called jenga rock on it too <laughs> that i didn't include in this image because i was like it gets in the way but like um it's really just a it's so like down in the valley over here is Sedona Sedona's down in this valley and you actually get some some city lights up on the side of the hills too um the thing I liked about it is like the sea of green of the pine trees look like they're like reclaiming the mountains because they Mm -hmm. go like up the mountains or they're like running across on the other side so it just looks like a constant battle between the trees and the and the mountains and really it was just it was absolutely gorgeous um eventually i was like all right well we parked the vans near the edge so they could do like pictures and video and i was like guys we need to go over there that's the flat spot over there like we need to put one van over there so we can at least go camp over there later they're like oh yeah yeah we'll do it we'll do it and some like guy in a honda civic pulled up and took the spot i was like come on guys like can somebody listen to me now so like eventually like we kind of found a flatter spot like tucked back in the woods from the edge so i wasn't like super angry with them because we did find a flat Still place very pretty. To, to camp and yeah and those purple, purple flowers, flowers. Are great. so if you're watching instagram reels <clears> i had a lot of fun with like sunlight and 
flower. Oh, here's Jenga Rock. I got to get that one on there for you. Um, this was uh, Sunrise the next day with Jenga Rock. Just because I think right. it looks like it's going to topple over. Pretty good. So, yeah, definitely, definitely. I've seen some of the stuff they shot from there. And once they like release it into the world, like I'll definitely share it out because it's. it's First yeah, of all, they, they are way better photographers than I am <laughs> with my cell phone, even though I did, I did a lot of vlog work for the company while I was out on the trip, which was unexpected. They were just like, no, no, keep doing it. You're good at it. I'm like, all right. Um, the next place we went from there was Moab. So never been to Moab. Met a guy at the show that was like, hey, guess what? Um, I own land in Moab. And I was like, shut your face. Oh. Like, he's like, I own land. I own riverfront land in Moab. And I was like, keep talking and yep. so um basically interest. yeah basically he invited us out to to his land and so um he has a section and this isn't a very good rep representation of it so it's really he, he and his business partner on a real estate company wow. they got a hold of this land they are going to do a full restoration of the land before they do any development to it um, a lot of the greenery that you see in this picture along the riverbank is invasive species the, this area was used for agriculture in the past. There's all kinds like of horrible like things tilled. that need, yeah, it needs to be fixed, needs to be, um, and they're going to do that. They're, they're going to take huh. the time. They have like a 10 year plan in place. Um, but so that's like, that's the riverbank side behind them. Then they just have kind of these fins that are just like the backdrop behind them. Oh, so this, this one has a name, but basically uh, the landowner was like, yeah, it just looks like a middle finger to me. And I was like, you're right. And I'm never going to unsee it now. Like, yep. uh, and I'm pretty sure like when I posted it, somebody was like, well, that is this name. And I was like, cool. Um, it's going to be the, the middle uh, finger. The central digit. Yeah, that's right. It's got a, it's got kind of like a Star Wars vibe to it here. Like, so yeah, if you told me we were on Tatooine, I wouldn't tell you no. Like, pretty sure that's where the pod racing was, right? Yes. Uh, like, I didn't like the prequels. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, I did. Yourself. This is when I started like making suggestions. So, I mean, I made suggestions the whole time to the, to the photographer and the, the, well, there's two photographers, videographers that were working. And I was like, go put it in the green stuff. And he was like, no, I don't want to. I was like, please just, if it sucks, I won't make any more suggestions kind of thing. And he took them over there and like, I, this That's is the picture that I took from my dumb cell phone with the power lines in the background. The photo, the video that he took is so good. <laughs> and I was like, I get to keep making suggestions, right? And he was like, yeah, you do. That was actually <laughs> really good. So turns out a background in marketing and social media is helpful. Um, but cool. the, the, great, the great part about this one is this built on this property, uh, he's eventually developing it and also to a campground and it had showers. So this was the first nice. shower that we took since Sunday that wasn't uh, super awkward. Mm. um after that we did a place that i don't know i ever need to go back to until the side flats <clears throat> were they salty <sighs> homie you have no idea hot um not too bad temperature wise like lit literally temps the whole trip were very reasonable um the salt flats were bad just because like everything reflects the light and so mm. like when you see people like with those sunglasses with the covers on the side, a hundred percent, I know why mm -hmm. they have those and need those and want those. Um, and this is the first place where they, they really got, um, one of my coworkers brought two of his Honda motocross bikes. So it's a 250 F and a 250 R. Um, R is literally the race bike. Um, and they, they kept being like, you're going to, you're going to get on it. Right. I was like, no, just had knee surgery. I'm gone for 12 days. If I come home and any part of me is inoperable, like that's the end. Like there is nothing in the future. Like, yep. But the where, last time on a dirt bike. Yeah. So like where we parked, it was kind of this harder crust. Um, and it does change throughout the day. Like we started to see places where this harder crust with the sun would like start to peak up and then allowed for like, I don't know if it was moisture escaping or whatever. Yeah. Um, Later in the day, like we, we got here way too early. And so like, we had to wait for the good light. Right. So like, um, eventually once the light started to get farther down, Oh, that's really good. 
thank you. This is my cell phone. It was me and just a picture. Um, but once the sun started to get like farther down, like we started to drive the vans, we had an FPV drone with us. So like we had both vans driving, we had one dude on the dirt bike and then we were just kind of doing some things in formation and stuff like that. But like all of a sudden, as we were driving, the surface had changed. It wasn't this harder pack stuff. It got, you looked in your, uh, side mirrors and you're like, we're leaving a trail. We're leaving a deep trail. Like, let's bail out of this now. Or let's get, stuck. Yeah. let's get back to the, the firmer stuff. And eventually like it, it went well, we got shots. Um, with the plan was to sleep on the salt flats. That's not no. allowed. No. Yeah. Didn't, didn't a hundred percent research that one. Mm -hmm. um, they wanted yeah, to, if it rains while you're sleeping on the salt flats, you are right. And that was part of the salt flats. Yeah. And that was the thing is like, it's such a fragile landscape. So this is actually, if you like look over here on the right of this image, mm -hmm. that's the salt flats over there. This is yep. literally like up the road, hang a right. And then there's some, uh, it's BLM land. that's just right there. So mm -hmm. like um, this is where camping or something. Yeah. That's where we spent the night. It's pretty um, nice. Next morning, got up, drove to Salt Lake City, um, where my best friend lives. Um, I know you got a buddy in Denver. Did you freeze? I'm going to keep talking anyway. It's fine. Um, so drove to Salt Lake City, uh, took showers at my buddy's house, which was amazing because it was much nicer than the showers we took with Tuesday. So like on this trip, like Sunday morning, Tuesday, Thursday to Sunday were our shower days. Like it was Oof. not. Yeah. Not every day. It. I mean, we could have like the vans have water in the back. They both vans had hot water heaters, but like, uh, one of my coworkers took a, a shower at the Grand Canyon, and then looked down and was like, "My feet are covered in mud." Yep. Like, yeah, you didn't stand on anything, dude. And everything around right. here is like a dust. Like, and you added stuff. water. That's what how you get <laughs> mud. Like, and so then he he literally took like a ten minute shower and spent twenty minutes like wiping his feet. We're like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> And then it showers a long shower, even at home with running water. Yeah, well, I don't, I, I don't know how long he actually took a shower. I gave him a good ten minutes because he's like, gotcha. hey, "I'm gonna be naked over here behind the van." I was yeah. like, I don't see any of that. Like, you do you, home. Like, <laughs> I am not out here for any of that. So, uh, yep. um, know how that goes, right? So the next place we went. So after we went to Salt Lake City, took a shower. That was like midday, and then we we're on the road again. We went to a place in Wyoming called Fremont Ridge. Um, when I looked it up. We were doing like research for, for this trip and every approach road was a forest road. So I was like, cool, that should be well-maintained. Um, and I'm pretty sure I sent you the picture. You did. And this it's, it's a glorified Jeep trail. It's like mm -hmm. two track all the way up. Um, and it like, I like this image cause it looks like it just like curves and goes and it's like, Oh, we're frolicking looks, in the Hills. It looks like something from long way around. Right. It absolutely does. Or like, if you were like, Hey, this is the road for the Lord of the Rings. I'd be like, yeah, it is. That's what like, <laughs> I'd, I'd be okay with yep. it. So this road led to, um, a section of it that, so we went through like a, like right when we started, there was like maybe 15, 20 feet of like vertical rise of like two track with some rocks. And we were like, Oh no, look at this. And so we filmed it as you do, because it's a content trip. And we got to this section and this is where the road just turns right and goes up the hill. Yeah. And in images, I feel like it never is representative never. of how that steep is it is. One of the noble rules of off-roading is that it never looks that bad on camera. Right. And so we got to this section and it was like, we either drive up this or we turn around and find a different place. Because up this, it basically just kept going straight up until we mm -hmm. could actually achieve the top of the ridge. And it was kind of like, so having one of, one of my coworkers has been, he's been on trips with the CEO of our company before doing this stuff. And he's like, I have seen him take the vans through way gnarlier stuff. Mm -hmm. He goes, if you take your time and do a good job, we should be just fine. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, well, this is technically your trip. It's for your department, for what we're doing. If you want us to do this, I'm on board. Um, but I need you to like, verbally record that so i have yeah, some right. i mean i'm gonna need you to sign this paper yeah here. like i i don't want to be the off-road enthusiast who, had, who went on the marketing trip that forced something on the company that mm -hmm. wasn't so like i just want to record it responsible thing to do yeah like we talked it out everyone's aware of the risks that we're taking did you wear down we did not 
Oh. So um, what I did was I put the van in manual. So 1M <laughs> or M1. Um, and I set the traction control to slippery. And I basically let the turbo spool and I let it just chug itself up. Like it really. I don't itself. Yeah, there was very little uh, throttle application, only on certain certain rocks where I knew I was going to get kind of hung up a little bit. Um, this I actually put this picture on Twitter, and Camille was like, "Wait, they make transits with dually? Like, yeah, they do, but mm-hmm. and it still has the all wheel drive. So like, mm-hmm. um, so having four rear tires was actually super handy in this scenario because it was four yeah. tires to um, kind of keep going. There's some tight gates that I had to navigate through with this oh, thing. That's always fun. Um, and it, this is where she, where I started calling her Deborah with her wide hips. Cause like all of a sudden I got to like <laughs> really tight, like the salt flats, Moab and Arizona. Was how not, wide is that one? I don't know how wide it is. Is it wider than a T-Rex? No, it's not okay, wider than so. a T-Rex. Uh, it's 22 and a half feet long though. That is not a small or no, vehicle. It's 20, 21 points. And then there's the box on the back. Like the deluxe box is not. The luminous box is not calculated in that. So anyway, we went up this hill. Uh, it Jesus has to be fucking. Oh my God. Do it. 264 inches is a lot of trouble. Yeah, it's a lot of van. So eventually, though, we did make it like to the top of the hill. We took our time. We did a good job. Um, I it being that. So this van has a little more of a lift. It's got Bilstein's in the front and Fox's in the rear. Um, both vans have the Quigley Q lift. Uh, I mm. found out at the expo we're the number one installer of the Quigley Q lift. Nice. Um, so it's a lift specifically for transits. It's a two inch body lift with a diff drop. Um, so all your geometry stays uh, the way Ford would want it. Um, I referred to the live van as like the <laughs> sports car where this thing just did everything we asked it to. It was more like the, the semi truck just plodding along, getting it done. Um, it had those two motorbikes in the back the whole time. So extra weight over the back tires doesn't hurt. Exactly. So, cool. but getting up on that ridge, it was great. It was glorious because eventually the sun would kind of like peek out and show us some sweet, sweet mountains um, on the top of the ridge. I don't know if it's the backside of the Tetons or not specifically, but it's definitely mountains that way. It's Wyoming and it's snow-capped mountains. So it's probably and it was, it was pretty Tetons. great. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome, dude. So that the weird part was right. like when we left here, it felt like summer, like it was in the eighties and nineties Flagstaff went back to spring. Uh, the salt flats were spring like, and by the time we got here, it was still kind of spring like, but then the next day we were went, went from here to Jackson and it was like fucking cold. Oh, hold on. I got one picture. I got well, yeah. You were in nice. Denver at the same time that my best friend was up in the uh, mountains and they got, right. they got a, a snowstorm. Not yeah, like, did. So we were high enough up, you could watch the wind move across the lake. So like places that had no wind, whatever on it. And then here was the wind kind of moving across the lake. It was so cool. Um, Yeah. Wyoming Wyoming doesn't get as much credit as it should to serve. (laughs) Um, We started taking dumb pictures at that point. So, Uh, And then the next day we went to jackson so we went to jackson so we could like send the emails make phone calls do some do some actual like work for a couple of us um one of my buddies did a lot of work on the salt flats he had a signal and i was like dude share your signal and he's like ah sorry i can't like that's (laughs) that's not cool like yep kind of being a bit of a richard um (laughs) but he was like all right sweet let's go to this this is schwarber's landing or I think it's Schwarbacher's Landing or something like that. And he was like, yeah, it's a great place. We can use it. And I was like, it's in the National Park. We can't use anything if we're in the National Park. There's no commercial photography allowed unless you go through some giant permitting process. You're like, I established that when we left. Correct. And he was like, no, 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 I know a great place. And I was like, yes, it is a great place, but it's in the National Park. So we went and basically played tourists for about 15 minutes. Uh, ran into a guy who used to be at Dometic and I was at GoFast and he saw the campers. Oh, he saw the vans in the parking lot and I was like, all right, what's up, man? Like small that, world that, well, everybody was around. Like if you watch Instagram, everybody left expo and stayed in the kind of the general area. Right. So, um, I did take a picture of uh, a couple of our shooters, um, just looking absolutely silly. So 
this Austin basically used a camera, a video camera the whole time. Every now and then he'd put on the FPV goggles. They had a, uh, so it's first person view drone, which means you get some intense drone shots, but it also means you look like an alien. So yep. looks like you're playing VR games in the middle of the freaking Correct. mountains. So we kind of, once we got out of National Park, we went to the National Forest over there. It's Bridger Teton National Forest. It's literally like right across the road from Teton National Park. Um, we kind of went up and Shadow Mountain is a mountain that's across the valley from the Tetons. Um, and there's just first camping there in numbered sites. So they told us to stay in the numbered sites. And we we're like, all oh, good with that. And we were going to go up the north end of the mountain. Well, that road was blocked. So we came back to go up the south end of the mountain and ran into one of the Forest Service members that was like, hey, listen, you got a couple of big vans here. It's supposed to rain tonight. And those roads get pretty shitty. Um, maybe don't lost. maybe don't go camp at the top of the mountain and we're on a schedule like we've got more mm -hmm. places to go you um, can't lose half a day trying to get the fans on stock exactly so uh discretion is the better part of valor i said to the team let's leave a van here so we actually get the campsite we want tonight and then we'll take Smart. the other one up Smart. to one of the lower campsites we'll shoot photography we'll do whatever um they actually get some i i have I don't know if I'm allowed to share these or not. <laughs> I'm sharing them anyway. Sorry, marketing department. Um, so Ooh, we took the, the live, yeah, we took the live van up. Um, we found the spot between two campsites. Like you can see the chair in the background. Um, mm -hmm. But while we were here shooting this, uh, a Denali full of dudes pulled up. Uh, one's from Sanford, Connecticut. One was from the city. Like. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I know who I'm talking to. Like, yeah, names. <laughs> like, can I get addresses? <laughs> like, yeah. I, uh, so, but no, it was like four dudes on like a, a bro hangout. One, one of them lived in Salt Lake, and the other two were East mm -hmm. Coasters. That's funny. Um, I think I got another one from up there. Uh, oh no, I got a. This was this was on a place called Fall Creek Road, headed up to the Tetons. Um, That's awesome. ro rolling photography is always some of my favorites. Nice. Um, and the kid who did this is so fucking good at it. Uh, I try not to tell him that because otherwise his head gets too big and he'll leave. <laughs> Got to keep him in check. Yeah, keep him in check. He's and plus he's like, he's the one who's like young enough to actually have been my offspring kind of thing. Like he's, <laughs> he's he's in his he, early twenties. Yeah, oh yeah, no, you definitely have to. Uh, he's got to stay alive, <laughs> right? So. <laughs> It did, it did uh, rain like an MF for that night in uh, just by the Tetons. Like, um, and we had a dude in like a rooftop tent. And like, this was the night where uh, it wasn't a great night for everybody. Even I was like, I woke up and I was like, I don't feel great, but it's raining and there are bears. So I'm going to keep not feeling great in the van until yep. it's a, a little more lighter out. Yep. Uh, my coworker who slept in the rooftop tent every night threw up off the side of the rooftop oh. tent. Uh, and Not made good. the two dudes down below him think they're getting attacked by bears because there's a bigger guy up <laughs> the tent wobbling it going <laughs> and then hearing things hitting oh the side of the God. van. Dude, that's like something from like Tucker and Dale versus Evil or something. <laughs> exactly. It's like the innocent thing where all of a sudden <laughs> like so something good. awful is happening. So, so uh, <laughs> we went north out of there, uh, kind of up and around. We were headed to a place um, in Medicine Bow National Forest, which is farther down south in Wyoming. And leaving there, literally, so like as we went into Wyoming, we were going to more early spring. Like none of the like none of the aspens had uh, leaves on them. Um, and the farther we went away, though, the deeper into winter we went. Like we actually were driving through. We drove through a snowstorm leaving that morning, basically. Awesome. Um, and they were like, "Well." I still don't know why we could have camped farther up there. I was like, dude, we just drove through a snowstorm. Like if that had been on the worst road farther up, like we're losing mm. like, the logic sometimes. I was like, it's not, it's not a sightseeing trip. It's not right. fun. We're here to work. Right. We're here to take pictures. We're There's here to do video. Consequence for going wrong. Correct. Like you can't risk everything because you end up risking the entire trip. And then it's a bad. Eventually investment. you cross that line. Yes. Um, so we basically got out from around the Tetons and we're headed south and like it, the place we want to go to is called Sugarloaf Campground in Centennial, Wyoming. Um, it's in Medicine Bow National Forest. It is at close to 11,000 feet Damn. and the same winter storm that had hit your buddy had yes. also hit this area. And so as we were driving 
up to this, like the sections of Wyoming we drove through, no snow, we're fine, we're good. As we got closer to this and driving up into the National Forest, we're like, crap, snow's on the ground again. And it got to the point where it was our turn. And I went to like turn left into the road and the road is literally a wall of snow, oh, about two and a half feet high. Yeah. And I was like, so we're not camping there tonight. No. So um, I actually think I have it on Google Maps. I can show That's you where crazy. we camped. Um, and so like the team was actually pretty, pretty like it's pretty late in the week at this point. Um, you've been on the road for quite a bit, but Sugarloaf, like, there we go. Looks amazing. Um, like, I'm just going to share some of the Google images from it because from the campground, like, this is just like, you're up, you got the pines. It's like this, we wanted to get the vans there near the water, do some reflection stuff. There was a moose around. One of my coworkers wanted to see a moose the whole trip and was like getting a little I mean, cranky next about it. Next and destination's like, main. I was like, dude, you can't, you can't will the moose. Like the moose will happen when the yeah. moose happens. Literally 45 minutes later, after I get done saying this, we drive past a female moose, a dope moose. Like, nice. Like, cool. Check a box, homie. Awesome. Um, it's like, no, I want to see a bull. Yeah. And that, like, literally the next day, he made that phrase. I was like, what do you, you can't have everything, what you want like that. But anyway, this is America. You can't be told anything. <laughs> Uh, so from that though, we started out the road, uh, which is a forest road, a fairly normal road, um, to get out. And then we were like, you know what? It said camping, like, I'm going to share this real fast. It said camping, like up this, as we're coming down the mountain here, all of a sudden the snow's gone. So we were planning just to head towards Laramie or Cheyenne, find some dispersed camping. All of a sudden, the snow's all gone, and this right here had a blue sign up the road that said camping. So we turned up it and then turned off it. <laughs> um, so as you turn off it here, there was like a, a little bit of a, it, this used to be a campground here. This was all mm -hmm. closed. And so we kind of came down this way. Um, there's a little bridge, little little river there, and kind of came up into the hills. There were some people camping in here just because of that meadow, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a Tacoma and a full-size Silverado here. And basically, we camped, like, up in here. Oh, God. And just basically parked them back into the trees. Um, it was just kind of dispersed camping. We live here now. It, that was kind of how it was. That's kind of how we treated it. And so... Um, oh, God. Well, I, here, here's what I'll say. I watched a coworker make a four or five point turn with a shorter van to park in a spot. I made a two point turn and put Deborah amongst the pines. It, it was fine. Like it was, and it was mm -hmm. fairly flat as campsites go. Um, it was kind of cloudy. It was a little windy, but like eventually it got towards sunset. Um, they got some really good. Um, so by the way, I don't, I didn't know that blue hour was a thing. And so that's the hour after the sun goes down and the sky's go a little blue. Um, I knew what golden hour was, I had that, um, but blue hour, I don't know if this will look right. They use it to shoot like the exterior lighting on the van. So like the, the front mm -hmm. led bars, um, I think they, makes sense. yeah, they did the rear exterior lighting and things like that. Um, you can kind of see how the sky is just bluish. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a sweet sunset. We didn't get it. Um, we were surrounded by the pines, but while before that was kind of going on, I wasn't feeling great. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go, go to the bathroom. I'm going to go in the woods, make it easier on everybody. Won't use the, the van toilet. And as I'm trying to find a spot. Oh boy. I found a found majority of a deer leg. And I was yep. kind of like, at that point I started looking up in trees. I was like, where's the rest of the carcass? Like, yeah, this one's a little sketch. Yep. Um, so that kind of put us on a little bit more of a, a of alert. High alert, yeah. Our bear friends um, didn't see anybody. That's um, good. Yep the the night went pretty smoothly. Um, on the way out, I'm gonna share another one. He's gonna be pissed. I do this. I, they did a little drone work on the way out. That's um, awesome. Yeah, as the sun's coming up, a little morning golden hour, and two venture vans in the woods. So again, like the road wasn't great. But the vans handled it 
just fine. Like mm-hmm. they're when, cause that was kind of Camille's response on Twitter today. He was like, what are, why are these vans? I was like, they're vans, Camille. They're not true off-roaders. You cannot, you cannot say, is this better than my gladiator? No, it's not. Is this right. better than my defender? No, it's not. Is it better than my GX, my Lakers? It's not. But it's a, it's good for what it is. Right. <laughs> right. Um, and with the Q lift and and the suspension upgrade, it's like they really were great. Um, oh. From there, we drove into Denver, and then just some odd experiences. Um, we talked about them off air. I think. Yeah, we, we don't we don't need to get into them too much. But like yeah. when you say like, oh yeah, I have friends in Denver, and really in reality they're like forty minutes south. Like, is it really Denver? <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> something will. We'll clear up another day, basically. But yeah, some yeah. yeah, it was just how many miles was this whole thing? I literally don't know. <laughs> um, I did a couple thousand. Yeah, easily. So it was like, so the first day we drove 15 hours from Kansas City to Gallup, New Mexico, and then it was another three from Gallup to Flagstaff. Um, so like yeah, I think that was like nine, eight or nine hundred by itself. God damn. Okay. Yeah. So you, you must be knocking on a couple thousand. Yeah, it's it's close. It's probably close to like three thousand. Um, Jeez. Because a lot of our transits were so like from East Pocket, where the end of the world is, to the spot in Moab was six hours mm-hmm. and thirty minutes of drive time. Mm-hmm. Part of that was twenty eight miles. At, doing like 25 miles an hour force washboard road that sucked yeah, but the rest of it was all the highways at 65 to 70 miles an hour mm-hmm. um from moab to salt flats was close to five um and then salt flats to salt lake was two ish or one and a half and then from there to the next spot it was another like three or four like literally every day it was like five to six hours of transit time um the shortest uh-huh. one but intended yeah transit yeah literally <laughs> i kept saying like a transit and i was like well that's what they are and that's what yeah. we're doing we're in, we're, we're, we're in transit we're also yeah. in transit uh uh-huh. we were in transit and transit in transit in transit and transits <laughs> the best oh, <laughs> um the shortest one was from fremont ridge up to the tetons that was only a couple hours um I think I, based on the stuff I've seen, Adam, I know they got what they're looking for for content wise. Um, I, I've, I've heard some of the feedback from the the higher ups in that department that they're very, very happy with what we came back with. Okay. Um, you could definitely tell it was some people's first content trip where you 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 kind of be like they like some person asked us if we could go to a location. I was like, you want to add three and a half hours to the day? Like we, we don't have oh, that kind of time. Yeah. And, and it was fine. Like it was an honest question. They had, they had to learn from that experience and different mentalities. Yeah. And the future of, I, I mean, I come from a marketing background. I've been on content trips before in the past. Like mm-hmm. when you go to shoot something, it doesn't matter <clears throat> when you're bored, you're still stuck there shooting it. Right. Like fine. You put your head down, you do the work, like you look for a different angle, like yep. you climb a tree, pet a bear no don't do that (laughs) like you have to keep you can't just be like well i don't want to do this anymore like no this is why you're here and it's the only time you're going to be here for a while yeah so you have to embrace the opportunity do something to make yourself keep your job right or do something that potentially gets you when they plan the next one they look at your name and the company roster and say well we can't not let him go he has to go put him on board um full disclosure like my day job (laughs) assignment like what i normally do did suffer like i'm probably not going to go on too many trips like that in the future and if they'd like me to we can have a discussion about that but i need to Mm -hmm. adjust some compensation things a little bit to make sure that i'm not then letting my family down and things like that but 12 days like if i had just gone to overland expo and flown home it would have been an amazing trip by itself adding all of this traveling onto the back of it was also made. I don't, I'm not, <coughs> excuse me. Okay. I'm never going, something just flew in my throat. Like <laughs> here I am in a house, like something flew in my throat. Like oh, Sarah not, doing a spitball and making not know I'm one of those again. Exactly. She's like, shut up. Yep. Um, I'd never need to go back to the salt flats. Uh, I'll go back if somebody wants to take pictures, but I, mm-hmm. we, 
clean salt out of those vans. We literally, after the salt flats, we went to a car wash in Salt Lake to get rid of the stuff. And then again in Denver, cleaning them up for the next oh. show. Yeah, we're that's still cleaning saying. salt off stuff. Like it's, it's, it was like a adhesive layer that just got. No, thank you. And I'm sure it's still under the vans because the vans too tall. You can't take them through some with an underbody wash. Mm-hmm. Sprinkler. Um, yeah, the sprinkler underneath. What's up, Ron? Ron's now cheering you on because that's Ron's solution to everything. The bottom side of his Land Rover is dirty. Yep. I'm about to do that this weekend. We're, we're going down to the beach, going to drive on the beach. So yeah, got my sprinkler ready. Nice. So yeah, it was a great trip. Um, I absolutely believe that people, a lot of people have just forgotten Wyoming. <laughs> it's keep it that way. Yeah, it's more than it's more than just Jackson. Like it's yeah. there's so much cool stuff. Yep. Anyway, uh, do you want to wrap it up? We've been going for a while. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got nothing else. Um, You're gonna well, we'll tease golf R again. <laughs> yeah, and, and some other adventures. Hopefully. Definitely talk about that. Yeah. Well, sweet. Uh, you yeah. can rate and review the show wherever you listen to podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to it. Please, please, please share it with a friend. It'd be really nice. Um, you can like and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, you can follow Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the Rue Hooniverse on Instagram. Uh, Ross is no, not like the one from friend. I'm at Overlanding Dad, and you, you can read what we write on Hooniverse, UTV Driver, ATV Writer, Everyday Driver, and US News and World Report. And my, dying. my throat, my throat is so sore. Right now. <laughs> and it has been for like, since, since before, like the first day of expo, when the wind was so windy and it was oh, so geez. like so much dust in the air. Yeah. It, it's like, I, anytime I talk longer than five minutes, my, my throat's sore again. Not, and I'm not positive. <laughs> I was going to say, not I've positive. taken the test. Yes. So, all right, cool. I'm going to go uh, get some shit done here. Yep. and i'll help my wife do whatever project she wants to do now because i have a huge honey to list that it's my <laughs> fault because i wasn't able to do it so now yeah. i gotta catch up fair enough sweet so, that's our show cool. thanks guys all right thanks